The story is set in Berlin during the 40s. Unlike many other novels, which tell us about the horrific life in the concentration camps and show mass exterminations, The Boy in the Stiffed Pyjamas is a piece of history narrated by the point of view of a young boy. Thanks to the Irish writer John Boyne, in 2006 the story of Bruno, interpreted by Asa Butterfield, aged 8 in the film, 9 in the book, who is the son of a Nazi commando, comes to life. As soon as Bruno's father gets promoted, the whole family has to move from their elegant home in Berlin to a new one in an extremely desolated era. The new house is a sad and solitary cottage, but beyond the backyard there is an endless wire netting fence. Beyond this cold and spinny barrier it is possible to observe huge buildings with red br bricks and sterile barracks among which a high raised chimney. Bruno was used to such loneliness. Berlin was a chaotic city and he was always surrounded by friends, so his new way of spending his free time changed into staring at the strange farm from the window pane. However, Bruno could understand why all the farmers were so awful thin and why they kept wearing the same stiff pyjama. Bruno is extremely loved by his family, but no one ever understands or listens to him. So, pushed by curiosity, desire of adventures and maybe the will to rise against his family, he decides to cross the border with the spinning wall to discover the new world. He starts to explore the backyard and reaches the fences near the camp, where one day he meets Shmuel, played by Jack Scanlon, a grown Jewish child whose only wish was to leave his youth far from the cruelty of the concentration camps in which he lived. Shmuel wears a stripped pyjama which marks his life. A totally different life from the life that Bruno leads. Despite all the differences that apparently make of the two boys to the different planets, Bruno and Shmuel become friends and decide to see in the other their own alter ego. They have the same height, they were born in the same day, the same happiness in observing the ball going from a side to another of the fence. But they have hands which can only bear two contrasting destinies. He thought about the people in their stripped pyjamas and wondered what was going on in Auschwitz and whether it wasn't a very bad idea if it made people look in that way. Boyne affirms that the naivety of the little protagonist is very similar to the naivety that other people nourish on the obscurity of this period. He doesn't want to tell the truth, 
He only wants to narrate a story which aims at showing us that any theoretical construct made up on the world cannot explain the willing of the victims, mostly the will of the children in the case of this film, to let their voice be heard. Boyne has many girls, but he doesn't want to upset, educate or inform us. His aim is not to be rated among the best writers of the Holocaust. His story is simple and delicate. It speaks about an important friendship which goes beyond differences, overcoming the modern concept of courage and ambition, leaving out the stereotype and the cruelty of that period. Brun and Schmuel have a strong relationship, that kind of relationship which is difficult to be found today. Sometimes a superficial look for us is enough to tag the person that we have in front of us. It is for this reason that Bruno's fit consists in looking beyond the pyjama. He focuses on the behavior of his friend, on his big sad eyes showing fear and resignation, and on his face which becomes more and more thin and grey as time goes by. Dangerous. Dangerous. Good fool. Come on. Do you not like playing? Just not my thing. This is an historical event that everyone knows, but this time it is told by a man who gives us another key of reading. Where innocence is powerful, where friendship is still one of the most important values of any time and place, and where human cruelty peeps out between the lines of this book, Death in Tears. In 2008, Mike Herman, director, scriptwriter, and executive producer, brings this wonderful tale on the big screen. Even if with some changes, for example to the character or Amber Beatty's behavior, who plays the role of Bruno's sister. Greta, who is a 12 years old girl and a strong supporter of the Nazi ideals, probably because of the propaganda, in the film she is more polite than in the book. or to know the name of his father. There are other changes when Bruno goes to the other side of the fence. In the book he had cut his hair because of the needs, while in the film he was the only person in camp who was to be bald headed. Another important difference is that in the film Bruno's mother, Vera Feininger, tries to keep away her son from the cruel reality of the camps, and goes against her husband Divinas, David Trends. Moreover, she immediately discovers Bruno's end, while in the book some months have passed before she could acknowledge where her son was and we don't see the arrival of the army troops. This novel deals with the reality of some years ago, the Nazis, but after a while it detaches from the common history and tries to go straight to our heart, thanks to the two suffering children were there for each other when they need help. Bruno and Schmuel first meet near the razor wire, but they are compelled to be separated until Bruno decides to get inside the concentration camp to help Schmuel find his father. Their lives are connected by a friendship that ends to be a dangerous game. In fact, the conclusion is unexpected and it leaves us bitterly empty inside.